Well, <laughs> they were exactly who we thought they were. I just actually watched the first game of the Sixers, so <laughs> let's talk about it, shall we? Yeah, let's, 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 let's look at some positives. Let's remember some things. Number one, Andrew Bynum, not on the Philadelphia 76ers. Isn't that great news? Great news. Six years ago, yesterday, when the Sixers played, the Philadelphia Phillies won the World Series. That's positive. That's happy thoughts. <laughs> uh, but still, the Philadelphia 76ers played the Indiana Pacers last night, and they did not win. They lost 103-91, so let's talk about it a little bit. It was a, it was a fun game. It was goofy. Sixers did some really athletic young things because they're really young and athletic and the Pacers just played better basketball and they beat the Sixers. I feel like that's going to be something we say a lot this year as Sixers fans that the other team played better basketball and beat the Sixers. <laughs> Let's talk about the game a little bit. First quarter Sixers jumped to a very nice little lead. It was really cool. And then they did this thing where they started attacking Roy Hibbert of the Indiana Pacers. And if you don't know Roy Hibbert, he's seven foot two. He's probably one of the best defensive centers in the league. And it's very hard to drive the lane against him. <laughs> and the Sixers just kept doing it over and over. They build a lead off of, I think they had a Chris Johnson three and a, uh, Hollis Thompson three and they went up 10 points and then the next four times down the court they went straight at Hibbert Hibbert stopped them he either changed the shot or got a block and immediately the lead went poof there it goes <laughs> oh. and that happened in the second quarter in the second quarter too charge back with a couple of threes this time was 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 uh one of, I think it was Sved's first three and then immediately started attacking Hibbert and he had five first half blocks that's how you get five first half blocks when you meet, you keep going at him. Like, why would we do that? And on the other side of the court, we're making him look like he's the best offensive player in the world because he's got 13 points in the first half on nine free throws. He only had two actual field goals. So we're just fouling Roy Hibbert, a player who is all defense and no offense. If you didn't watch any of the playoffs last year when the Pacers couldn't get any points or rebounds from him and that's not to be mean about Roy Hibbert I love Roy Hibbert I think he's a fantastic player he's a great defensive player he's a reoccurring guest star on my favorite television show Parks and Rec and the whole thing about him not getting rebounds watching this game tonight and watching games in the, ha the past he's going everywhere trying to stop uh, stop layups that he's never in position to get rebounds. I mean, it's not his fault half the time. He's trying to run that entire defense because tonight they didn't have David West. He's got Lewis Skull out there who does not know how to play defense. Guys like CJ Miles, Rodney Stuckey. I mean, that Pacers team is bad. It is. The, the Sixers losing to them is not a good sign of the future because that Pacers team was not looking good. CJ Miles just throwing up any shots he wants anyway. I'm getting off tr off track because I still want to keep talking about the game, the, the go through the game because the second the second quarter was really fun, like really fun. Uh, Alexi Sved, that Ali oop he throws as soon as he walks in, that was amazing. And they kept talking about Malik Rose and uh, Mark Zumoff kept saying about how Sved had a really down year last year, and he did. Like, I don't remember him doing anything of note, but I don't remember anything of the Minnesota Timberwolves last year, except that they weren't very good. And I remember Shved in his rookie year, and he was promising, which is why I was okay with getting, with, with the trade, I mean, I wasn't okay with the trade for Thaddeus Young, but to get an actual NBA player, and Alexi Shved looks like an actual NBA player. He's 6'6", so now we're going to have MCW, who I never said anything about being 6'6", but I'll talk about Tony Roten being 6'6", for multiple minutes last podcast. We got Tony Roten, MCW, and Lexi Sved, all 6'6". Six, six. Sved can shoot. Like, last year was bad, I know, but the, his rookie year, the man could shoot. Why? What's going to stop him from this year? MCW obviously can't shoot, and Tony Roten's trying to work on something, but they're all three of them have great court vision, 
they're fast and they're so long that's um, it's um, it's i mean i'm just saying this could be fun things to look at and that and just watching those that uh, that first Ali oop by alexis ved it was it was just so ill and tony rowan tony rowan looked great in the second quarter just ah uh, right at the, before the end of the second half the, the last possession when Tony Rowan did a Euro step and did a little reverse layup right down the, the lane, he looked exactly like Harden. And that's exactly the player he should be. And like he, he attacked Hibbert too much, just like everyone else on that team. But he was still getting to the rim, and he was just needed to finish. And that's just little things. He's third year in this league, and he got no minutes as a rookie on Memphis and was on the Sixers last year. I mean, it's going to take time to mature into a professional basketball player when you're not when you're not playing professional basketball like we were last year with our slapdash team oh. and the way they're talking about the, the roster for the sixers right now i can just take a couple minutes about that where they're talking about all the guys that are getting waived we picked up marquis teague he's gonzo already i didn't even mention him when i did a podcast on tuesday and marquis teague was signed on tuesday and he's gone and it's friday and that's going to happen all year. I mean, that's why you, th you have to remember, like, if Shved or Rowan actually overachieves, they're probably gone by the all by the All Star break. If anyone overachieves, they're probably gone by the All Star break. So this is going to be a really weird team to watch. And the fouls. I mean, this team is so obviously so young. The fouling was going off the charts. They only had 10 men for Brett Brown to play because there were so many waves and so many people injured on the Sixers. And all of them had multiple fouls before the end of the second quarter. He had to keep Nerlens Noel in because he, when he had two fouls because he got two fouls in the first four minutes. It was ridiculous. A couple other things from that first half. Oh, Brandon Davies. He had that really sweet hook shot. We're not gonna we're gonna talk about that terrible three in the fourth quarter later, but that, that hook shot. Nice. And then there's the flagrant foul where let's just talk about this for a quick second. Malcolm Thomas, who obviously no one has ever heard of in their entire lives, comes into play for his first minutes, which I assume in a professional basketball game. I have no idea. He might have played last year. He may have, and and he gets mad that he's not getting a foul call. And he pushes Roy Hibbert. And, like, it wasn't a bad push. And it was a little bit of acting on Roy Hibbert. The man was on Parks and Recreation. But it was so obnoxious and unnecessary that it was obviously a foul. And Hibbert got right up in his face afterwards. And Hibbert's 7 2. I would never get up in his face. I can't. I literally can't get into his face. But, I mean, that was all on Malcolm Thomas. That was stupid. The guy, Roy Hibbert was an all-star last year. Of course he's going to get that call. I mean, that, he's going to get a foul on him. And eventually he's going to get the flagrant after they see it. Because it was so obvious the kid didn't had no reason to put his hands on Hibbert, let alone push him after he, did, he got a no call. It was just dumb by Malcolm Thomas. And he got sat down immediately after because he's a kid. That's what the thing is. All these Sixers are kids. This team is so young, it's preposterous. Let me talk about Nerlens. Nerlens is the youngest. Ah, oh, Nerlens. On D, I mean, he is doing things that are fantastic. He is rim protecting, he is swarming, he's jumping, he's around. He's so fast and so, like, agile and he's so skinny. He is going to get decimated down there eventually, sooner or later, but... It's so much fun to watch now. He's like a gazelle. It's, it's great. Like Anthony Davis Jr. I mean, it's the obvious comp because they both went to Kentucky a year apart from each other. But it's just, oh, and they're, they're talking about him trying to run the ball from point to point. Like he was like a point guard, a seven-foot point guard. I mean, it's the same thing they said about Anthony Davis when he came out. Good work. Let's see. I mean, we'll see what happens. If, but on offense, it is Raw. 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 Got to slow down. Got to let things happen to you, buddy. <laughs> it's uh, it's just the little things. I know. And then we can go talk. Let's talk about the third. And then in the third quarter, this is what ended the game. Okay? It was close. We were right in there. 
right at one point, Sved hits a humongous three, brings it in 68-66. I think there was three minutes and 45 seconds left in the in the third quarter. 68-66 Pacers. The Sixers are trying to hang on in there. They're not as good as the Pacers, which is not saying much because the Pacers are not good, especially with no David West playing tonight, who is probably their best offensive player now. Ugh. And <laughs> so then what happens? Shved hits huge three. Hibbert, Hibbert goes in, gets denied by a huge swat by Malcolm Thomas, funny enough. But Malcolm Thomas, being a kid, doesn't just take the ball or tip it, which he easily do at this point, and tip it to a teammate, slaps it as hard as he possibly can in any direction he wants, because nobody wants the ball on the Sixers. <laughs> So he slaps it to Sved, who hits Sved, goes right to a Pacer. Pacer hits a putback three. Might as well have just been an offensive rebound. <laughs> Which is just another thing about these are kids, and it's the first game of the season. So there's a three. 71-66. Sved falls down trying to stop trying to get trying to block the guy who is going for the wide open three. Brandon Davies tries to do an inbound pass to Shved, who is still on the ground. Hesitates, falls down. That's an inbounds violation. That's what you learn when you're in third grade. You're not allowed to step inbounds while passing the ball. <sighs> so, and immediately after this inbound violation, the Pacers finally get the ball back. Corner, corner long two to CJ Miles. He nails it. Now the now the Sixers are suddenly down uh, down seven. Sved goes down to the other court. He should have had a, a goal. It should have been a goaltending violation. Hibbert definitely hit the rim when he was trying for a block, and the ball definitely moved while it was on the rim. Doesn't happen. Pacers come back. Corner three. Suddenly we're down ten, and fifty six seconds has gone by. <laughs> so we had we had a. a we had a huge three by Sved to bring it within two. A huge block and what would have been a great defensive stop when we're down by two turns into a three, a stupid turnover on inbounds, down five, not getting a shot. I mean, down, th yeah, it's just three, a two, a three, and suddenly Sixers are down 10. 2.45 left in the third quarter. And pretty much from there, it was not pretty. <laughs> Sved did hit a, a huge, awesome, gorgeous uh, third quarter ending buzzer beater on a three, which was fun. I hope he said hibachi like the great Gilbert Arenas as he was as he shot the ball, but can't assume. So in the fourth quarter, they really it, it, they showed a lot of how competitive nature, let's say, because they they rallied. They made a lot of stops. They made so many stops and did so little with those stops on offense that it was disappointing to watch in the least. And then down by two. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, Sixers had a chance to come back and kept making stops and just couldn't make shots. And Rowan, <laughs> Rowan does that. Uh, from the third, from the three-point line, crossover, huge dunk in the middle of the lane, and it seems like it was going to be something. And they came back; they were within four. And then Nerlens has that terrible walk as he tries to he tries to do that thing he could easily do in college, which was do a bounce step through the middle of the lane, and no one would stop him, and he would be able to dunk on everyone. Sorry, young man, this is the NBA, and he cut stopped he tried to get out of it and he walked so hard and that was with 348 left and they made a couple moves we're down by three Brandon Davies is sitting at the top of the key wide open and there's a reason for it the ball comes to him and he's like hey we can come back right now we can do it air ball and I'm not even talking close Air ball. Pacers are leaning. <laughs> Canseco Fieldhouse went nuts with air ball. And after that, it was pretty much done. <laughs> Out of their hands. 
Sixers lose by 13 to start off the, le the year. Which is, you know... They are who we thought they were. It wasn't the worst game to watch, even between two teams that were decimated by injuries. It was so sad seeing Paul George in a suit. He looked good. It was just sad seeing him. And then MCW is there. Hopefully he'll come back soon and we can try this whole 6-6 six, six <laughs> point guardathon, if you will. That'll be fun. <laughs> More interesting than this game, which got real boring at points. It's the Sixers just, like I said before, just kept going into the lane after Hibbert. And Hibbert's not the guy you do that to. They just stopped taking shots out. Like, shots. They just kept going into the lane. And they weren't getting fouls because Hibbert's not going to get those fouls. Malik, uh, Malik Rose, the commentator, can keep complaining about how Hibbert puts his chest in and then goes vertical, but that's what Hibbert does. If he's going to get away with it doing it to LeBron, he's not going to get called doing it to Tony Roten. That's just that's. I mean, that's just the way the cookie crumbles in the NBA. <laughs> uh, some other things we can talk about. Uh, I mean, Sixers lost. Oh, we should talk about how. Grantland, Zach Lowe, who is an amazing writer. If you don't read him, you should absolutely write him. Read him. He's amazing. Just for learning about basketball, knowing what you're seeing. He wrote in his... He, he went down through the visions of basketball, the tiers of the best and the worst. And he starts with the best. So he had to, So if you want to read about the Sixers, you have to scroll all the way down. Plus the page down button. I believe it was 27 times. You got to get through all the GIFs. And you got to get through all the YouTube clips of the really good teams doing really cool stuff. Ignore that stuff because that's not going to come up with the Sixers. Just keep hitting, keep hitting page down. Keep hitting page down. Then you'll get to the end. Don't go too far because then you're just going to go right past the Sixers part. And it'll just be Zach Lowe's face in his little bio. You don't want that. Don't want that. Go back up. You'll see dead last. 30 sixers and three sentences this team will be bad at basketball thank god there's 29 other teams basketball is back <laughs> that's us guys philadelphia together we build <laughs> yeah that was fun and then uh grantland also had the nba shoot around today which they talk about Watching the Sixers, which I haven't read yet. Let's see what they say. Hmm. Oh, yep, this is just me reading. Sorry, guys. <laughs> just reading. Oh, Kemba Walker had a couple threes that were really nice. That was fun. But I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the Sixers. Ah, Sixers hung in for three quarters against an unmanned Pacers team. Yes, we did. And we... Forced lots of turnovers. We didn't talk about that. The defense was swarming tonight. We were just picking the ball away, and it was great. And you know what? It was fun. And we had no players that are under six foot five. I like that. Good point, Danny Chow. We don't. They're all six foot six. It's it's ridiculous. I don't know. And then he talks about watching the Sixers as a social experiment, which is what I'm doing as a podcast. <laughs> hey, whatever. I mean, it was a fun game, really. It was. I don't care. Anyone else can be mad about it. I had a great time watching the Sixers. I'm going to keep watching the Sixers. Tony Rowan and Alex Alexei Sved, they show GIF of it. Check out the GIF of, Alexa, of Tony Rowan going deep to Alexei Sved. Come on. Sixers basketball. One, two, three, four, five, seventy Sixers. <laughs> uh, I mean, other than that, just talking about the Sixers. Just looking to see if anybody else wants to talk about it. So yeah, I actually watched the Sixers. I'm gonna actually keep watching the Sixers. And uh, you guys can come talk to me if you want. Thanks.